At this point, you've heard a lot about trauma symptoms. You've heard a significant amount about the treatments themselves, some of the evidence-based treatments we can use. And you've also done something else. You've likely let yourself feel some of that arousal, some of that distress that comes when we talk about trauma. And there's something, something happening there. And you're showing it, the body and the mind that you can handle it. What comes up at this point often are the barriers to treatment. And there are a number of common responses uh, that are worth working through and addressing prior to treatment. We can address these barriers and better prepare you if you decide one of these routes is best for you. One of the barriers is the perception that we can't handle it. And simply by having some of these thoughts, allowing yourself to stay in that moment, there's some mastery there. There's some success there. If you felt any emotional change in this session, any distressing emotions, you're teaching the mind something. We often have this mindset of good emotions and bad emotions. We're rewiring that. No good emotions, no bad emotions, just emotions. There's pleasant, there's distressing. But if we can start to change the way we, we think about what we're feeling, we can really get more adept at feeling what we're feeling and then transition to understanding why we're feeling that way. That's our thinking. That's where trauma is really having its impact. Some individuals have uh, taken approaches to, to dealing with their trauma or their trauma symptoms that are inconsistent with what I've talked about. And, and what I've talked about today are evidence-based approaches, and that's not to disparage anyone else's approach, but we want to look at that idea of what's right for us. Now, from some people I work with, I hear, you know, I, I tried before. I talked about my trauma. I just made it worse. We really want to look at how we talked about it, you know? Was it very structured? Was it with the intention to make sure that we're showing the self that we can get through this? You know, there's a starting point, there's a stopping point, no matter what I'm getting there. Was it, you know, from the idea of trying to simply feel better, trying not to think about it? Was it maybe more from that avoidance approach? We really want to take the time to understand what some of those failed attempts at treatment might have been, how we're viewing them, if they really were failed attempts. There are a lot of people that I work with that have tried you know, something like CPT or PE, and they're very challenging treatments. You know, that's something I'll say up front. They're very challenging treatments. They ask a lot of people, but I've worked with a bunch of people that have gotten through these successfully. And it doesn't necessarily have to be this, this linear approach. For some people... It's this idea of almost priming the pump. You know, if you have worked on trauma with others, you've likely felt some of that distress and showed the body and mind that you can handle this. And this next time might be the time in which you're much more prepared. You know, there may be fewer stressors going on in life. There may be fewer obligations. We're able to dedicate a little more time and attention to specifically working through and processing this trauma. At this point, something I'm asking of you, it might seem like, a tall task. It might seem like a, a very significant ask. And it's basically saying, you know, with the idea of prolonged exposure, talk about what's likely the last thing in the world you want to talk about in a very intentional manner. And with a distinct starting point and stopping point, we want to get to that point, that, that last session where you've got it processed in a way that works for you. But you're pushing back against some perceptions. There may be some beliefs that resonate with you right now, like I can't handle it. It's too much. It's too challenging. We want to look at those. Are those accurate thoughts? Are those functional thoughts? We have to prove them. If those are part of that self-talk. We have to make sure that that's an accurate statement. Because to this point, these very challenging treatments, a lot of people have worked through. A lot of people that tell me this is the last thing they want to do. But the way that it's impacting their life, it's the right time for them. And that's what we're trying to determine. Is this the right time for you? In terms of some, some other barriers that may be there, it's, it's pretty common for us to see some emotional distress while we're working. You know, we expect anxiety. We expect an increase in discomfort. And some people find that medication is best for them. You know, when we look at the research behind uh, psychotherapy and psychiatric medications, 
we know both are supportive. They both work. They're both clinically effective. And we tend to find the best outcomes when we combine the two. Research repeatedly shows that. So if you are concerned about maybe you know, anxiety in particular, that you might have a return of some depressive symptoms when you start treatment, let's get ahead of it and speak with the psychiatrist. Talk about some patterns you've noticed in your own in your own past, in terms of your mood, in terms of your different emotions. We want to prepare you in the best way we can. Again, it's very challenging treatment, and we want to best set you up for success. If we think about CPT, 12 sessions, we're talking about three months. If we think about PE, 8 to 15 on average, some people mention that 10 to 12 session range. Again, we're talking, you know, two to four months. It's, it's a pretty significant amount of time. And in the same way that, you know, we, we uh, plan some of our behavioral changes, you know, we, we have the new year and then jump into a new diet or exercise routine, or, you know, we're going to make some changes in our relationships. We dedicate these specific uh, moments for specific behaviors and approaches. We want you to do the same thing. You know, this is a great time to have some discussions with important people in your life. You know, if I'm asking you or your clinician is asking you, hey, let's let's work through this trauma finally, we can expect that you're going to be maybe a little more distressed in the day-to-day, a little more irritable, a little more uncomfortable. You may not be sleeping as well as you typically do. We might be noticing more of those emotions that can be difficult for, it can make it difficult for us to be ourselves. Let important people in your life know that you may be having some of those emotions. It may be more difficult in the day to day. You don't have to tell them what you're not, you know, willing to tell. Share what's comfortable for you. But also try to structure your day to day. Some people I've worked with have taken, you know, some time off work, at least for the first few sessions. Get comfortable with what the process is, what it might look like. Some people try to plan, you know, time off at the end. Some people are able to take that entire chunk off. We may be planning this treatment in the future and we're working toward it. But we want to be very deliberate in terms of our approach to it. 